and uh, it's used for solid tumors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've reached a new level of understanding how the immune system reacts, and we are currently having new approaches to immune therapy. Today, it became clear that there's no single silver bullet, that there's no single drug that have a very targeted specific action. All of those drugs have dual actions. So from one side, they do whatever we want from them. On the other side, they can uh, produce side effects or can even reverse the uh, the result. It depends on the conditions. Also, we understand today that biological markers are important as uh, prognosis factors. And one of the recent markers is uh, PD1 ligand. Uh, based on a couple of analyses, it turned out to be an unfavorable prognostic factor for such as melanoma, lung cancer, uh, breast cancer, and so on and so forth. And our knowledge of the immune system today is much better than it was in the past. The immune system is a very complex mechanism that has so many players that uh, come into interaction with each other, with its objects. And this interaction, uh, the diversity of the interactions, is a factor that might not only help us, but also it might uh, allow us to overcome this problem of uh, resistance towards uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, uh, evolution of clones, tumor clones, because the immune system has the same properties. It is diverse. It's heterogeneous, and uh, it can uh, it can uh, progress. And there's been so many approaches. Uh, recently that are aimed at activating a particular mechanism, a particular fragment uh, of uh, immune system and immune response system. But we've achieved a breakthrough when we understood that in all stages of cells interaction, immune, immunological synapse uh, participates, uh, this checkpoint. This checkpoint uh, ensures which way the response will go. And uh, understanding it and then creating inhibitors or checkpoints uh, helps us to harness that system. Today, we have activators of uh, uh, synapses, and that led to the revolution we are now talking about. So today, two particular drugs have been registered um, that influence CTL4. The first inhibitor, immune checkpoint inhibitor that appeared and that made the breakthrough is uh, epilimumab. Uh, Tremulimumab is registered. Um, not, well, it's not in Russia. There is an anti-PD-1. There are anti-PD-1 drugs, uh, nivolumab and pembrolizumab. And there are anti-PD-1L drugs, atezolizumab, durvalumab, and so on. You see how many of those drugs are registered. You see there is a registration for treating melanoma, um, uh, cancer, uh, lung cancer, um, clear cell, uh, adrenal cancer, um, uh, canceroma, um, and so on and so forth. So in fact, uh, these medications, these drugs are universal because this mechanism of tumor interaction with the immune system is a little bit uh, independent from um, the localization. Uh, let's have a look at the number of uh, objective response to immunological uh, treatment. With uh, SCLC, there is only one research where it didn't show any improvement. All other researches are positive. In green, we're showing third phase research in uh, light green uh, second stage. You see the uh, frequency is, uh, the frequency, the level of response is 24, 31%. Um, the neck and uh, head cancer here. With a combined therapy, it is marked with C. We see high efficiency with breast cancer and colorectal cancer. It means that these approaches are universal. And uh, we can expect a long standing effect.
So, uh, and it doesn't really matter what kind of patients we have here, but um, we can see some similar pictures and some similar responses. This is a patient who had a skin melanoma. He was treated with pembrolizumab, and in a couple of days we saw a very fast clinical response. In a couple of days we saw a partial regression. Uh, there is a patient with uh, metastatic uh, lung cancer. Uh, we fixed some cases of pseudoprogression, and they were very intense. Uh, the patient arrived to us with a significant regression, and uh, we were even thinking about uh, uh, putting the patient off the treatment, but we decided not. To do so, the effect uh, has progressed. The patient is uh, now feeling better, and see how expressed is the pseudo progression. And th that is uh, a situation for January, and that that's how it looked like two months ago. Uh, you see a significant, a very good effect. Similar uh, case is with pembrolizumab, uh, uh, and it's used for treating urotelial cancer, so it's a delayed effect, and it really improves the overall survival rate. Similar table, but we are showing uh, the median in months. With melanoma, the medians are quite long. You can They can be achieved in less than 15 or 24 months. Good results for kidney cancers, good results for non-small cell uh, cancer, uh, urotelial cancer, stomach cancer, good results with hormone-resistant and uh, chemical-resistant uh, adrenal cancer. Uh, the new level now, the new bar is 38 to 45 percent, depending on the PD-1 expression. But we know that we have a group of other drugs that produce a very, that uh, lead us to a very good effect. For example, kidney cancer. It, it has a couple of um, kinases, but have a look at the comparison here on the table. There were various researchers that shoot the efficiency of axis, intersect T, record one, gold, and CT. And the, the, be the best results were achieved uh, in monotherapeutic, uh, sorry, with the immunotherapy, uh, I I with this immunotherapeutic approach. Uh, we know for a long time that combined therapeutics is uh, more advantageous, it has more benefits uh, as opposed to monotherapy because usually several mechanisms are in action here and uh, pilimumab and nivolumab inhibitors allow to significantly improve the survival rate uh, again if they're uh, taken in combination but not only the immune therapeutic drugs have this property even after the um, disease progresses they can continue to act and they can they can continue to uh, make the life of the patient better even if there's some criteria for non-efficiency that's checkmate 025 after the disease progression the patients continue to be treated with nivolumab and we see that the survival rate of the those patients treated with this drug uh, where they were not taken off uh, is much higher. It's a statistically uh, significant result. This result is characteristic of any mono um, immunological drug. Uh, now the uh, succession of uh, application of various methods, uh, we've already been shown the results of Checkmate 64 where Epilumab and uh, Ipo uh, nivolum uh, and then nivolumab was uh, taken, and you see uh, where EVO was first, uh, the, the survival rate is much higher. If we analyze Keynote 006, here Pembro was much higher in first line than in the second line of therapy. Our research also shows similar results. Uh, these are the research of our cohort of patients uh, treated with uh, Pembro. The biggest survival rate was where we had uh, two or three immunotherapy options before Pembro, Deviants or any other types. Immunotherapy is also characterized by the following. It can really change the progression of the disease in the future. It, 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 we have a memory effect, even if it was not effective. You see, there's some research that shows us, well, this is a nemo uh, therapy. Uh, patients with uh, mutated melanoma were treated with uh, inhibitor, but Although it seemed like this research is not, well, is this treatment is not efficient, those who were first treated with uh, immunotherapeutical drugs uh, showed better results. It means that immunotherapy can influence subsequent efficacy and efficiency of other standard methods of treatment. 
Uh, definitely another unresolved issue is biomarkers and today various options are being used for those biomarkers pdl1 expression we've talked about that uh, genes expression levels cytokines levels immunocompetent cells uh, levels and so on but what i would like to mention here is that biomarkers are important not just for uh, tumorous uh, tissues but immunocompetent cells as well and we're showing m vigor 2010 and we uh, assess the um, um, efficiency of tezozoan and uh, we looked at immune infiltrating cells here as well and uh, if we did that we could find those ben those patients that benefit most of the treatment definitely uh, the revolutionary methods that uh, influence uh, the activity of immunological synapses those uh, checkpoint uh, inhibitors are very efficient and very good and we can talk a lot about it but there's other methods as well and they're being forgotten right now uh, the enthusiasm is dwindling not because they're bad but because we have well, PD-1, PDL one inhibitors now, and we expect a lot. We place our hopes on them because they, had, they, they help us to change our attitude towards the situation completely. So these are the results of our research. We compared the vaccine therapy with the therapy of dendrite cells, and they were uh, treated with those cells. Uh, they had a metastatic melanoma, uh, and they also were treated with uh, Pembro. Uh, and you see, for Pelumab, uh, the survival rate is quite good, 18.4. Vaccine, 12.6. No statistical differences. Maybe those groups are not as big, but still, this, the methods that are aimed at more active gene presentation, cytokines, shouldn't be discarded because these are good methods. They, they are working, and if they are combined with other therapeutical methods, they will definitely improve the situation, and we need to know which patient to treat with which drug and what particular method to use. But this is the way for further research. That's what we need to do in the future. We need to continue to optimize our approaches because those new approaches, notwithstanding the fact that they are quite significant, are yet not accessible at the moment. So we need to just select those patients who will get the most benefits out of them or um, we need to make sure that each patient treated with uh, Im Im immunotherapy is um, getting the maximum output. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, there will be more methods as for the price. We don't really know, especially those quadra combinations. I don't know who go who's going to afford them because today they're looking quite um, out of the roof and combined therapy consecutive therapy these are the things that we are yet to investigate and yet to explore but these are the things that we already know no and correlation between various methods i'm pretty sure will lead us to yet another breakthrough in treating malignant tumors thank you very much for listening